Hi, welcome back to my channel. David here, and today we're gonna to talk about stenosis. And what you really need to know about stenosis is that it's a symptom. It's a symptom of, believe it or not, posture over time. And I don't mean just the posture of stand up straight. What I mean specifically is actually the pressure that's on your spine. Stenosis occurs when you have a buildup of tissue in your spine based on your brain sensing there's too much stress and too much pressure on your spine in that spot. So kind of like a callus on your hand that develops over friction, stenosis is very similar. It develops because your brain senses too much stress, too much pressure on one part of your spine and needs to build reinforcement, just like a callus on your hand. So as it builds this reinforcement, this tissue inside, then, what, and then that canal, the spinal canal, starts to narrow. The canal is where all your nerves run through. So if the canal narrows enough, then it can impinge on nerves, specifically the sciatic nerve, which is why common symptoms with stenosis are pain, numbness, or tingling down the leg or into the feet. Oftentimes it's in both feet. It can be in one or the other, but stenosis is often very commonly just on both sides. And as you know, it's absolutely no fun, like sciatic pain in general. But stenosis is a very specific cause, and again, that's all about the pressure in the spine. And so we wanna solve why that pressure is building up in your spine in that spot. And as I said, the why is about your posture. And let me explain again. Typical stenosis posture for most people that I've seen, and I've seen hundreds of people with stenosis over the years in my clinic, typical stenosis posture is slightly tilted forward at the upper body, so we call it forward flex at the trunk, and if you feel these muscles in the back, they feel like steel rods. They're really developed, they're, they're like this wall, they're that hard, and then there's this, they're thick, and they're strong, and they're unbelievable, and they're strong because they get worked out every day, all day long. The body should be ear, shoulder, hip, knee, and ankle should stack up vertically. That way as gravity goes through your body and through your spine, it's distributed equally from top to bottom. With stenosis, gravity's not being distributed equally. So that means that the pelvis is out of alignment, the spine is out of alignment, and the shoulders aren't in their place either. So you want to address all of them. The big thing with stenosis too is that stenosis is about your posture but it's also helpful to know what helps and doesn't help. Typically what helps with stenosis is flexion. So when you go into flexion, it feels better. When you go into extension, right, flexion is, is this, where you're bending over, or flexion at the hip joint, flexion at the spine, rounding of the spine, that's flexion. Extension is the opposite, right? If I was gonna go into a back bend, that would be extension, and typically that, that hurts because it compresses the nerve even more. So these exercises are gonna help you hopefully relieve the tension and the pain that comes from stenosis. And we wanna fix the postural reason for the pain not just addressing the pain symptom itself, because remember, stenosis is also a symptom. So we need to address the postural reason for the stenosis, as well as the pain, and the two go hand in hand, luckily, so we can do both at once. So here we go. So first thing what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need a wall. And you're gonna go on your back very quickly on the wall. You're gonna have a few exercises that should relieve the pain, and they're very powerful, and they're very effective, and you can do them every day, Anytime, you can do it a couple times a day if you need to. So first thing what you're gonna do is you're gonna go on your back, you're gonna put your feet on the wall, knees bent about 90 degrees. So your feet are gonna point straight up, they're gonna be about fist width apart, and you're gonna take your right ankle and you're gonna cross it over your left knee. So get the ankle over the knee, and then with your leg muscles, not your hand, you're gonna push that right knee towards the wall. And then you're gonna relax your shoulders and you're going to breathe. And what you're gonna notice, you're gonna notice a bit of a stretch, probably in your hip, maybe in your butt, in your glute. Whatever you notice, just breathe through it. Now nothing should increase pain, so if any of these exercises increase pain, then jump out of them and see your doc if you need to, or your local health, health practitioner and have them help you out. But this should feel pretty good to most of you. And you should just breathe through it and let that right hip stretch out. What we're doing is we're taking out the twist in the spine right now, the twist in your hips. We're also relieving the pressure off your lower back and the pressure off that area of the stenosis. Okay, other leg, left ankle over the right knee. 
Take your left knee and push that towards the wall with your leg muscles. And don't forget to breathe. Relax your shoulders. You're gonna hold each side for about one minute. As you breathe and you push that left knee away, you might notice that one side's tighter than the other. You might feel that one hip is a lot more limited or restricted. We need to balance that out. Our bodies are designed to be balanced right to left or as similar as they can be despite one-sided sports and injuries and things like that. Okay, put your feet back on the wall. Now what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna scoot up all the way to the wall so that your hips are touching the wall and you're gonna flip back around. You're gonna get the soles of your feet together. Let your knees drop out here. And again, you're gonna breathe. Make sure your tailbone is on the ground. It shouldn't be sitting up in the air. It should be down. Let your knees relax. Let your arms relax and breathe. Now in this one, you might feel a stretch in your lower back. You might feel a stretch in your glutes, even the inner thigh muscles in your groin area. Just breathe, inhale, let your stomach rise. Exhale, let it fall. What we're doing is we're progressively getting your hips and your spine into deeper flexion. And we're gradually relieving the stress and the pressure off your back. We're asking it nicely. Now, the other thing about stenosis is that it's always coupled with an upper back that's tight and a little bit locked down. How do I know that? <laughs> 20 plus years of experience, but also posturally speaking, if you have stenosis, that means there's too much pressure in one part of your spine. That means there's compensation in the other part. That means the other part of your spine is out of alignment which is why all the pressure is going down on one spot. That misalignment is usually due to tight hips or imbalanced hip muscles and a thoracic back and upper back that is also in lockdown. So we're gonna loosen that up for a second. What I want you to do is I want you to put your palms together, fingers interlaced, elbows straight, and you're gonna pull your hands all the way back to the floor without bending your arms. And you're gonna pull back and forth, back and forth, and you might notice that your shoulders Start to loosen up after a few reps. You're gonna do about 20 of these. You can do more if you want. But we're just gonna go back and forth here. You're gonna to help to realign and reposition your upper back. And as your upper back realigns and repositions, it'll relax your lower back. It'll also realign your spine exactly where the stenosis is to help take the pressure off the nerves. I'm gonna say this again, I'm gonna say this a couple times. If there's any pain, stop. Just skip this exercise and go to the next one. You want pain-free experience here, the pain should never increase. You should always feel better with these. Okay, when you get to about 20 or so, now, elbows on the ground, straight out from your shoulders, back your hands on the ground. This time, you're gonna slide your hands up above your head until your fingers touch and back down. You're gonna keep your elbows and the back of your hands on the ground as you do this. Now, some of you won't be able to get your hands on the ground. Just do the best that you can. Do the best you can, try and keep those elbows down, those fingers down, and the wrists down at once. And you're sliding up, keeping that 90 degree angle at the wrist, I mean at the elbow. And just reach up and then back down. These are called arm glides, floor glides. Just gliding those hands and arms up overhead. Again, now we're getting the shoulder blades to rotate, to align, to balance, and we're putting a pull on the muscles all the way down your spine, all the way into your tailbone, and helping to relieve the tension and the pressure and helping to realign your spine. And again, if you can't do this, if you can't get your elbows, your hands on the ground, just do the best you can, or even just hang out in this position. So whatever you can do, do what you can. Next, relax your arms at your sides and it's time to straighten out your legs. Okay, now for some of you, you'll be able to get your hips all the way to the wall with your legs straight, tailbone on the ground. With, for others, you might have to scoot way back, but you need your tailbone on the ground. Whatever it takes, your tailbone should be on the ground. It shouldn't be floating up in the air. Okay, it should be firmly planted on the ground. You should feel stable, you should feel 
um, like you're not gonna sway side to side. Okay, so if you can't get up to the wall, great. Get all the way up there, legs straight, push those knees to the wall, flex your feet back, and make sure your feet are straight ahead. Okay, not out to the side. You want them straight, palms up, relax your shoulders, and breathe. And this exercise, you're gonna stay here for about two to four minutes. You're just gonna breathe, pushing those legs to the wall, thighs contracted, flex your feet back, palms up below your shoulders, and breathe. Inhale, stomach expands, exhale all the way out. Remember, keep those feet flexed back towards your knees, Keep the thighs engaged. Don't let those knees bend. Bend, they should be pushed straight. They should be locked out. And you're gonna feel most likely a big stretch down the back of your legs, in your calf muscles, back of your knees, hamstrings, or all the above. That would be completely normal. Scoot back from the wall as far as you need to for that stretch to be manageable. You don't wanna be in total agony here. That would be no fun. So do the best you can. Get all the way up to the wall if you can. If not, don't be afraid to be a foot or two feet away from the wall if you need to be. This is all about relieving this tension and stress on your back, helping to relieve that nerve pain or nerve sensation. If there is pain or increased numbness or tingling, go back to this position with your soles of your feet together, knees out, and see if that relieves it. If it doesn't, then just come up and try it again another day. Definitely see your health practitioner about any of this stuff or your doc. And keep breathing. Other things that can be helpful in terms of uh, other modalities with stenosis, um, acupuncture, uh, of course some, some types of physical therapy can help. Um, but generally acupuncture, sometimes stretching, sometimes I don't recommend um, all types of yoga, only because of the extension demand in some that, uh, that can lead to pain. But if yoga feels great, then awesome. Motion is good. Okay, so you're gonna be here a couple, couple minutes, two to four minutes, thighs tight, feet pulled back, relaxing your shoulders. Okay, and now come on up and let's see how you did. Shake it out, get a comfortable stance. Let's just see how you're feeling. Check in with your body. Walk around a little bit if you need to. And hopefully you feel much, much better. Keep in mind that any kind of emotional stress will add to postural stress. So when you have stenosis and you have pain, there's always an emotional component at play here, especially when the pain is at its worst. That's because, as I said, emotional stress adds and combines with postural stress to create an event. And that event is usually pain. So you always wanna deal with that emotional stress too. Meditation, sit down, focus on your breath, breathe. If you just focus on 20 breaths while you're breathing in a comfortable position, that could be enough. If you wanna bring in gratitude or love or another emotion with it, that's fantastic as well. But I highly recommend it because again, we are not just physical, we are emotional beings made of light and love. And so the more that you can do in terms of addressing the emotional part, it will augment the physical part to create balance in the whole you. Thanks for watching. If you liked this, please hit like. If you um, really liked it, please subscribe to my channel because there's a lot more. And you can check out the other exercises on sciatic pain and back pain and things like that. If you want to, I've got lots of programs for different ailments. And uh, so tell your friends and family if you know someone who's also in pain. The whole point of this is to have a place where people can find free exercises and free help for chronic pain. Thanks again for watching. Hope to see you soon.